Hi class, the next book of the day is The Banana Leaf Ball, How Play Can Change the World, written by Katie Smith Millway. The Banana Leaf Ball. Dio Procundo didn't know why the war began in his country, but he knew that one dark night his family was forced to flee their hillside farm and its terraces of sweet potatoes, beans, and potatoes. Dio wanted to bring his favorite toy, a soccer ball he woven from, ban from banana leaves. He was the best player of all his friends, but his father told him, he Joe, tomorrow he could make a new one. As his family hurried down a path, more farmers joined them. Suddenly, men with torches and machetes exploded out of the dark. They set fire to huts and carts and attacked the farmers. Dio's father shouted, Gende, Gende, go, go. When Dio finally stopped running deep in the forest, he was alone and very frightened. Now Dio lives in Wicol, a refugee camp in northwest Tanzania. For weeks, he had traveled alone through the dark forest, staying hidden by day and running at night. He survived only on dewdrops, wild fruits and leaves. At last, Dio came to a great lake and a fisherman found him, just skin and bones and brought him across to this place. The camp is dusty and each day he uses a tap to fill one can of water for bathing, cleaning and drinking. He also receives one meal a day. There are huts made of plastic sheeting that he and thousands of other ref refugees call home. He misses his family and prays they are safe. On a good day, Lacole seems almost like a village. In the center of camp, there is a marketplace where men and women trade vegetables and sell mats woven from maize huts and jewelry made from paper beads. Teachers hold classes under trees when it's not raining. There's even a playing field. But when food becomes scarce or water runs dry, fights break out. Some boys form gangs to get more food by stealing from others, even though no one has much. At school, Dio keeps to himself. He especially avoids Remy, a gang leader, who picks fights and bullies other students into giving him whatever they have, food, pencils, paper, spoons. Dio longs for the time he used to spend playing soccer with his friends. One day he remembers his father's words from the night they fled and begins to make twine from dried banana leaves to bind up a new ball. While he sits outside his hut, twisting leaves, Remy and his gang storm over. One boy pins Dio's arms behind his back. Dio struggles, but Remy grabs the twine and runs off laughing. Dio goes inside his hut, blinking back tears. He kicks at his pile of banana leaves drying on the mud floor. The next day, Dio stays indoors. First, he twists more leaves into twine. Then he wraps layer upon layer of leaves into a big round bundle. He ties the twine around crisscrossing, ties it around crisscrossing the cords to hold the ball shape, passing it back and forth between his hands. Dio can tell it's a good ball. He decides to hide it. A little later, Dio hears a commotion. When he looks out, a man with a whistle around his neck is striding down the path. Children from the camp are following, shouting and laughing. The man holds a ball, not when made from banana leaves, but from leather. Dio joins the crowd. Arriving at the playing field, he sees Remy and his friends. Remy makes a face at Dio and lifts his t-shirt. The twine he stole is holding up his shorts. Suddenly, the stranger blows his whistle, throws the soccer ball in the air, and bounces it from his forehead to his knees, and then to his feet. Hmm. 
Marwatsa, the coach says in Gurundi to a group of youngsters. Do you want to play? You go, you go. Yes, yes. Dio wants to join too, but he isn't sure. He sees boys and girls across the field watching and talking excitedly. He also sees Remy, his arms, qu his arms crossed, quiet for once. Just as Dio turns to walk away, the coach shouts and throws in the ball. Without thinking, Dio catches it on one knee and bounces it knee to knee, foot to foot, and down to the ground. Great, said the coach. You can be captain of the shirts team, so keep yours on. And you can be captain of the skins, the coach tells a quiet, sturdy boy named Yvonne, who quickly sheds his shirt. Then the coach begins to sort the rest of the boys into teams. When he gets to Remy, he says, you join shirts. Remy comes up behind Dio and squeezes the back of his neck hard. We better win, he snarls. But first the coach wants the team to warm up. They form two lines facing each other on either end of a row of sticks. Dio starts off dribbling the ball between the sticks to the other end of the field. Then he passes the ball to Yvonne, who brings it back and kicks it to the next player. Dio watches watches when it's Remy's turn. He is pretty fast. Finally, it's time to play. The coach has each team take a side of the field. The whistle blows, and the center for the shirts kicks the ball to Dio. Dio dribbles it fast right past Yvonne. When another skin runs at him, Dio fakes a kick and knocks the ball sideways around him. An elbow jabs his side, and Dio catches a glimpse of one of Remy's gang. Then someone trips him, and he sprawls in the dust. The whistle blows. Bow! shouts the coach. Shirts get a free kick. Dio picks himself up quickly and sees Remy standing open. Without thinking, Dio kicks him the ball. Remy catches it on his knee and starts dribbling toward the goal. Remy is closing in on the goal, but so are two skins. From the corner of his eye, he sees Dio and shoots the ball sideways. Dio catches it with his foot and kicks it high toward the goal. Remy jumps up and knocks it with his head right past the goalie. The shirt score. When the game is over, Dio's team has won by a goal. Everyone is out of breath, tired, and happy. Remy squeezes Dio's neck again, but more gently this time. We did it, he says. Soon, all the shirts have their arms around one another, singing a victory song, stomping the ground and laughing. The skins gather too and joke that it was a lucky goal that they will win next time. Great game, says the coach. You joke, tomorrow, we'll switch around the teams. Walking back to their huts, Remy says he used to play soccer with his brothers before he lost them in the war. This makes Dio think of his own family. Urbanzi, you're good, Remy tells Dio. Can you show me your tricks? Dio thinks for a moment, then replies softly, you go, yes. I have a ball we can use. The next morning, Dio brings his banana leaf ball out from its hiding place. He shows the other boys some of his best moves. Then Remy shows everyone how to loft the ball high over someone's head. He kicks it so hard a piece of twine breaks. Don't worry, Remy shouts, running after the ball. We have more twine. Taking the cord from his shorts, he gives it back to Dio. Smiling, Dio makes a quick repair. And the scrimmage is on. Remy comes by Dio's huts later. That was fun, he says. Can you show me how to make one of those balls? For the rest of the morning, they twist twine, bundle leaves, all the while talking about the homes and families they miss. Before long, others come by Dio's hut for lessons and conversations. Months pass, and the boys of Lacole keep making banana leaf balls and playing together. 
ball by ball, practice by practice. Children who were once afraid of one another laugh together. There are still problems in the camp, but no one feels so alone anymore. They are like a team, and their hope for Ijo tomorrow is becoming hope for you for Ubu now. A few years later, it is safe for Dio, Remy, and the other refugees from the camp to return home, and Lucole closes. Dio is overjoyed to find members of his family who had been living in another camp. They rebuild a home together on the plot of land they once farmed and replant crops of sweet potatoes, beans, and bananas. But Dio can't farm every day because now he is a coach. Every Friday, he goes to a local school to help children learn to play together and trust one another. He also teaches them how to make banana leaf balls. Today, he arrives to find two boys fighting. He thinks back to his first game at Lacole and blows his whistle. Then he tosses a ball to one of them. Hoji, oh, let's play. A real Dio. Today, more than 65 million people are refugees, men, women, and children, who have, who have had to live their, sorry, who have had to leave their homes because of war or disaster. Many live in or have lived in temporary camps around the world. Much of this story is based on the experiences of one such boy, Benjamin Natsaborkria, from Burundi, a country in East Africa. In 1993, 10-year-old Benjamin and his family had to flee their home when conflict broke out. For months, he traveled through the forest, at times surviving on rainwater, wild fruits, and leaves. Like Dio, Benjamin eventually became separated from his entire family. After a long and very difficult journey, Benjamin finally found himself in Lacole, the setting for the, for the banana leaf ball in a refugee camp run by the United Nations, an organization made up of many countries working to improve human rights and reduce conflict. In Lacole, Benjamin was overjoyed to be reunited with his father and some cousins, though grief-stricken that his mother and sister did not survive their escape. Although comfortable compared to other camps, Lacole had its troubles with gangs and a lack of resources and Benjamin still wished for stability and safety. But life there got better for Benjamin in 2001 when a coach from Right to Play organization arrived. Right to Play is an organization that uses sport and play to educate and empower children and youth to overcome the effects of poverty, disease, and conflict. They believe play can teach children how to protect themselves from disease, encourage them to attend and stay in school, and model ways to resolve conflict to create a peaceful community. Benjamin used his childhood passion of weaving banana leaves into soccer balls and joined a right to play team. He found that playing sports was the only thing that gave him relief and let him relax. While playing, he and his friends were able to laugh and have fun. Eventually, Benjamin became a right-to-play volunteer in the camp, and as he coached others, he found his confidence and his tolerance for differences growing. He began to look to the future, to build his skills, and to set goals. In 2008, Lacole Camp closed and Benjamin finally returned home. There, he began to organize activities for children in his community to help them learn tolerance and confidence through the power of play too. He even rose to lead Right to Play's national training team in Burundi, training 520 coaches who support 35,000 youth, changing fear and distrust on, play, dis distrust on playgrounds into empathy and teamwork. And here in East Africa, and these words were translated for us. And here are some of the real pictures. 
former, former child refugee Benjamin is coaching children. And here's a collection of his banana leaf balls. And there are other websites and things like Playworks and Right to Play and Switch and Gonzo Soccer, Grassroots Soccer, all organizations that kind of teach us about being mindful of each other and tolerating our differences in each other and kind of reminds me of Enemy Pie. You think you have an enemy, but you actually have way more in common and become good friends. And that was the banana leaf ball.